Well, welcome to another uh, attempt <laughs> at an unpopular opinion uh, where I just ramble about something I think most people would disagree with me on. <laughs> and today, what I'd like to talk about is sparked by all these lovely memes that I'm seeing now that we've got this lovely war going on in uh, Ukraine that are saying, look at these people fleeing from war with their pets. How could you ever give up your pet if they can make sure that their pet comes with them in the war zone? And you're just like, all right, there's a lot to unpack here. The first thing is, why are you sort of subtly shaming anybody from Ukraine who had to flee and leave pets behind? Like, you know, it would be a tragedy if a single human being lost their life because they wanted to marry their pet and sacrificed something else, their safety, in order to do that. Because, you know, I don't think the pet's going to do too well without their person anyway. So, uh, yeah, you know, we don't need to imply that people who couldn't or, you know, wouldn't make that sacrifice, you know, we need to make sure that we're not shaming them, which kind of are. Uh, the other thing about that, and this is probably where the opinion's going to get a little more unpopular, is we need to stop telling irresponsible pet owners that they should keep their pets. We just need to stop. We've got... I don't know why everyone seems to think that shaming people for getting pets that they don't want anymore and cannot or will not take care of is good for those animals. Do you think about what kind of people you're shaming into keeping those animals? You're, pe you're shaming people who are the type of people who would do whatever they needed to do to keep up appearances. And you're shackling them with an animal they not only don't want, but they will resent very fervently. And when you resent something, you can't help but take that out on that thing eventually in one way or another. And I... Even if those people keep those animals and take care of them physically in every way that they can or every way that the animal needs, that's not a good life for companion animals. Companion animals need a human connection. They thrive on it. They can starve away for lack of love and affection. That's all they want. And you know how I know that? Because I have seen human beings treat dogs abominably. But they, those dogs still want every scrap of attention they can get from those people. When I was growing up in West Virginia, it was extremely common for people to have a couple of dogs tied up outside. That they just tied to a tree maybe or maybe didn't give a dog box to and put out a couple of a water dish and a food bowl and came out you know once a day or so and gave them some water and food and that was their entire interaction with humans that was their entire life they never got taken off that tie they never got taken inside they never really got anything at all other than that and those dogs without fail loved their humans they would get so excited seeing their humans come and they just wanted them so bad. It didn't matter how neglected they were. They still wanted their humans. And so any dog and probably most cats are going to wither away without having that love and affection that they need. So you are trying to convince people to do that and you're succeeding every <sighs> we are so weird about animals we don't we don't see them as animals you know we don't understand that their priorities are not our priorities what's important to us isn't what's important to them 
dogs live in the moment. They can go through insane, awful circumstances and be rehabbed with the right person who's patient and knows how to approach them in almost every circumstance. There's some circumstances where the most humane thing is to, to let a dog go uh, because they have no quality of life. But in, in most circumstances, uh, depending on the dog and, and how extreme circumstances are, a dog that's been in a, a neglectful home can go into another home and, you know, move on, learn to, to love their new environment because they don't dwell on the past the way that, that humans do. They just don't, you know, it's, they're, they're not humans. We treat them like our babies, but they aren't actual babies. They're adults creatures and they you know <laughs> one thing that I definitely see all the time with my dog is she tries to take care of me back she's trying to take care of me as much as I'm trying to take care of her you know even though she's my sweet little baby and she wants me to treat her like a sweet little baby she still knows she's not a baby and she still has her own goals and priorities and because she is a companion dog her goal, her priority is, is to be where I am, you know, to, to be part of, of my life in whatever regard my life is going. And that's why she's right now just sitting here in bed with me. Come here, baby. Come on. Come see mommy. Come here. Come here, baby girl. Come here, baby girl. Come here. Come here. <laughs> of course, she doesn't want to come. Come here, baby. No, she just wants to lick my feet. Come here. Come here. Give me Kim. Come here. Come do map. <laughs> come here. Come here. Come all the way here. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. She is my baby. And she is bonded to me. Like, not every dog gets this bonded to their person. She's an extreme example. But... Any dog is going to wither away and not be happy if it doesn't have a job. And, and most dogs' jobs in our modern society is companion animal. Now, there are dogs that, you know, pull sleds or herd sheep. That's different. They have a job. They're functional. Uh, that, that gives them satisfaction in their life. But when a dog's only job is to be their person's sweet little baby, that's what they do. You know, little princess. Oh, she is. She loves me and I love her. And we enjoy each other very much. And uh, every dog deserves that. Every dog deserves to have someone who cares about their emotional well-being. And so if you know somebody who has an animal that they don't want and they're going to mistreat either physically or emotionally, why do we want to convince them? Why do we want to shame them? Why do we want to tell them not to do something that's in the best interest of their animal? That's my only point here. <laughs> well, I have one more picture, Kim, because she's adorable. <laughs>